Hello and welcome to Rough Cut Film Review. Just a reminder, but the jingle competition is very much still underway. It looks like we're going to actually have some entrance, but at this stage it's all to play for. So please get in touch on roughcutfilmreview at gmail.com if you have a jingle for me. You don't get any prizes, but you'll get a credit on the videos going forward, but obviously no actual money reward. So anyway, back to the review. So hey, hello, welcome to Rough Cut Film Review. This is a review of Dumb and Dumber. So doing these reviews, I generally get accused of two things. Firstly, I never like anything and secondly I don't like comedies and I have no sense of humour whatsoever. So anyway I went away and thought about the comedy aspect of that and to be fair I'm approaching what 90 videos now, 90 reviews odd and I can't think of a single comedy that I reviewed and actually liked. I criticise a lot so Movie 43, Keith Lemon the movie, Ted, I didn't like Ted although a lot of people did. So to be fair this is to some extent readdressing that balance that hey I'm a fun guy Whew, wackiness I can't get enough of it so here we are Dumb and Dumber well it's a Farrelly Brothers film and back around the millennium and the 90s they were some of the biggest and most successful names in comedy they'd done there's something about Mary Shallow Hal me myself and Irene and my favourite from the mid 90s and some people really hated it was Kingpin I really enjoyed that film with Bill Murray unfortunately since the, the relatively good days of the mid to 90s to the no early noughties the Farrelly Brothers have been involved in movie 43 and if you've seen that and you like it please do get in touch I am thinking about forming a self-help group for everyone that's seen movie 43 so we can somehow help each other in, and just provide support and just be there for each other I think if an alien race landed and the only thing they got to see about humanity was movie 43 I think they'd be entirely justified in just exterminating humanity worth mentioning now that Dumb and Dumber is due to get a sequel I think it's probably coming out next year at some stage probably next summer but there we are so Dumb and Dumber in hindsight it was very much a vehicle for Jim Carrey's physical comedic talent and actually when he is constrained within a role I do like Jim Carrey very much it's when he's got free reign to go and do whatever he wants to do that his antics irritate me rather but here he's really good alongside Jeff Daniels who's also really good so plot wise we've got Jim Carrey's character Lloyd who is probably the dumber and with Jeff Daniels being the dumb as far as I can see Lloyd is working as a limo driver he takes a beautiful lady called Mary to the airport in Rhode Island. He notices that she's left her bag in the terminal, so he runs in and retrieves it. On returning home, he then convinces his good-natured flatmate Harry to travel with him in their vanny, trucky thing to go to Aspen on a bit of a road trip to give Mary her bag back, and he only assumes she'll make sweet love to him. So it's a very simple setup. Obviously, there are some complications around the bag, and it turns into a bit of a hostage situation. It's part road movie movie but ultimately it's an excuse to lead us into a number of comedic set pieces where the two simple characters go into and it works really really well in that regard and believe it or not it was a comedy that really did have me laughing. Firstly our two lovable losers are actually somewhat likeable. They're well meaning. Rather than being dumb I think they're really children trapped in the bodies of adults. It's sort of a ruder version of big. They therefore do have sex or at least try and have sex. They drink beer but ultimately they're they're naive and they have the emotional responses of children. The crucial factor here for me is that Carey and Daniels are ultimately very likeable in the role. I can understand if their rows and their fights get on some people's nerves, but for me the film worked fine. Spoiler alert, so if you are sensitive, do turn it down. But I like the relative lack of resolution at the end. Our lovable losers largely end the film in the same position they started it at. For me, the jokes work. They're actually funny, whether it's one of the two characters getting his tongue stuck to a frozen ski lift or the the results of being poisoned with laxatives or being mistreated by a burly redneck. I found myself laughing out loud and I was involved with the story which as I've said is simple and is just a device for setting up these comedic set pieces but there's absolutely nothing wrong with that if the comedic set pieces are funny. The bad stuff? Well the comic silliness of the two leads is offset by the hammy and serious overacting of other members of the cast and this for my taste is a little bit overdone and erodes the sweet nature of the leads which I think the film absolutely needs. It's crucial for the film to work. What I did find somewhat problematic was the uneven tone of the comedy from frothy, breezy, silly antics being undercut by a couple of really dark scenes. So for example, selling a decapitated bird to a blind boy seemed like a gag that simply didn't fit into the comedy that's largely centred on toilet humour and the frenetic silliness of if you want to hear the most annoying noise in the world. So there we are. It's a very positive review. It's really good fun. It is slightly uneven in places and I don't think that quite works and I think the Farrelly's have had problems with that throughout their career but ultimately 
hey, it's a comedy I found funny. Kind regards, Christopher Thomas.